Okay, welcome back. Right, I hope you learned something uh, about uh, ministering healing and de uh, deliverance in the first session. Um, and I want you to go back home uh, and meditate on it, re meditate on it. And when you, while you're taking notes, and if you're taking notes, uh, you know, clearly distinguish between session one and session two. So you can kind of meditate on session one, what was taught, and session two, separately, what was taught. It might help you with that. Okay. Um, so this the previous session is all about understanding God's heart and, and I mean his heart to see us whole right this is our father we are talking about right our creator he he knit us together in our mother's womb right he has good plans for us and because he is good right everything about him is good uh, you think you have good plans for yourself but think again he has better plans for you right uh, and so that's that's the heart of our father. He wants to see his children whole and well, right? It could be physical, emotional, right? Inner healing. Everything is important for him, right? I'll, I'll, this is one statement that someone uh, made. It says, if it's important to you, it is important to him, right? If it matters to you, it matters to him, okay? He is not a college warden. So it's just to provide you all the needs that's oh, okay breakfast okay lunch is there okay water is there and all of that he's he's our father right he's uh, he he wants to just give us it's so much more in abundance than we can imagine right um so are you with me right um so i hope this course will give us a new perspective to who this beautiful uh, god is okay so that was the first session all about we looked at eight biblical reasons as to why it's important. Now, I'm sure one reason is enough. It reveals the nature of God. And, and I'm also sure that eight reasons are not enough. Right? Uh, the list can go on, but that's what it is. So in this session, uh, we look at uh, a few things. Um, let's look at what this one point that says, uh, he desires, like I said, that every believer can do this. Right. Let's look at John chapter fourteen, verse two, verse twelve. Sorry. John chapter fourteen, verse twelve. Now, this is one of the scriptures where you'll be reading this a lot in this course. There are a few verses like that: Mark chapter sixteen, and uh, John chapter fourteen, <laughs> uh, time and time again. Uh, what was one of the key points that we learned in the last session? One of the key points that we learned is that healing is not in the method or the process. It is in the, it is in the person of Jesus, right? Um, and then and the another important point that we learned is that every believer can do this, right? Every believer can do this, right? We are his children. He is our father. He intended all of us, whoever, you know, if you call ourselves as a Christian, that we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, we are called to go and minister in healing and deliverance. Okay, you, you don't have to be called for a separate ministry for healing ministry or deliverance ministry uh, for you to go and you know pray and heal the sick. Okay, All right. John chapter fourteen verse twelve. What does it say? Amen. Right. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do. Okay, so let's pause. The works that I do. So in the previous class, uh, in previous session, uh, we learned a couple of things about the works that he does. And what, what does Jesus say about the works that he do? It's the Father's work. So he says, the works that I do are the Father's work. And in that... The Father is in me and I am in him, right? And so then he says, here, the works that I do, he will also do. And greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father, right? Um, and then let's read one more scripture. Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16, um, verse 17 says, And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues, right? In my name, they will cast out demons and they will speak in 
new tongues. So those are the two bases uh, of today's class as well, this, this session as well. A supernatural healing is in the person and not in the process. The second thing is everyone can do this, right? Including Francis. <laughs> yeah, just kidding. Okay. Right. Um, there are two key important truths uh, for every believer to demonstrate the power of God. Okay, two important truths. First thing is Holy Spirit power is given to all believers. Okay, that's the first point. Holy Spirit power is given to every believer. Okay, and second point. Sonship, glory, is given to all believers. Sonship, S-O-N-S-H-I-P. Sonship, glory, given to all believers. Okay, Those are the two key points. Now, when Jesus walked on the earth, he was fully God and fully man. Right? Um, so he was a deity. He was God in origin and identity. Right? He was God in origin and identity. What do I mean by that? He was God in origin means his birth was supernatural. Right? Everything about that was supernatural, isn't it? Um, so he was God in that. And his identity was that he is the son of God. Right? He was the son of God who walked on the face of the earth. Right? Um, so that was his identity. However, what made him man? That he was not omnipotent anymore. He was not omnipresent. He was not omniscient. Now, what do these words mean? Right? <laughs> what do they mean? Like omnipotent is what? Omnipotent, P O T E N T. All powerful, right? Omniscient. All knowing. Right? Uh, omnipresent is what? Present everywhere. Right? He, is, he, can be, he can be here, he can be another part of the world at the same time. Right? So that's what omnipresent is. Now, because of the limitations in the human body, when we say that he was, he was fully God and fully man, but because he was a man, he was not omnipotent. That means he was not all-powerful. And we see in scriptures that he had to rest. He was tired. Right? He, he slept on the boat. Even though it was in the middle of the storm, he slept. Right, uh, he ate. He was hungry. He was tired. Uh, when he was put on the cross, it hurt him. Yes, he didn't say like, "Oh no, I'm all, all powerful." It was like, "Yeah, no." Right? He was when he was beaten, when he was stripped, when he was, uh, uh, you know, whipped. It hurt him. Right? Uh, and then he was not omniscient. Um, the Bible says uh, it's very interesting. Uh, in John chapter 8, verse 28, it says he was taught by the Father. John chapter 8, verse 28, right? He was taught by the Father. And Luke chapter 2, this is beautiful, and I want you to make a note of it. Luke chapter 2, verse 46 and 52. Luke chapter 2, verse 46 and 52, it says he grew in wisdom. Are you with me, guys? Right? This omniscient, this all powerful, all knowing God, like he was, you know, um, for eternity, uh, he was fully God, he was fully man. Now, why are we talking about this? Uh, and again, he was, om he was not omnipotent, he could be only at one place, right? Um, we are talking about this to just establish the fact that every single thing that Jesus did. He did it with the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay? Every single thing that he did, he did it with the power of the Holy Spirit. If Jesus did it with the power of the Holy Spirit, how much more should we? Are you with me? Okay? So let's look at uh, Luke chapter 4, verse 18 and 19. Luke chapter 4, verse 18 and 19. Are 
Amen. Right? That's a beautiful verse, isn't it? So the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Right? We can just stop there and uh, move on. So, and because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Again, you see, preaching of the gospel is followed by signs and wonders, isn't it? So that's what that's something that we learned. Uh, another verse, Matthew chapter 12, verse 28. Matthew chapter 12, verse 28, it says, But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. If I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, right? Acts chapter 10, verse 38. Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Can I read that again? How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who are oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. The, so the miracles that Jesus did, he did by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? So the second thing, that's, that's the first thing that we spoke about, right? And the second thing is that the same Holy Spirit, Sorry, before going to the second point, the same Holy Spirit has been given to you and to me. Amen? Aren't you glad? This is what happened on the day of Pentecost, isn't it? Uh, he said, Jesus says, he gave a very clear instruction. Wait until you receive power from on high and then go into you know, all, all the corners of the world, right? And so we have been given the Holy Spirit to function in ministering, healing, and deliverance. And secondly, Jesus walked in sonship glory given to, which is also given to all believers. Now let's look at John chapter 1, verse 14. John 1, verse 14, it says, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. Another word for dwelt in, in English, uh, which is used there, is he tabernacled uh, with us and we beheld his glory. Okay, so the Greek word for glory in the New Testament, a huge part of the New Testament, Testament was written in Greek. Uh, the Greek word for New Testament is doxa, D O X A. Right? Doxa means make very apparent. Or manifest, that's what it is. To make very apparent means manifestation of who God is and what he does. Okay? Manifestation of who God is and what he does. John chapter 17, verse 5 and 22. Okay, let's go to John chapter 17. Have you read John chapter 17? It's a it's a must read chapter. Okay. Jesus is talking about you and me in that chapter. So, it says verse 5. John chapter 17 verse 5 it says, "And now, O Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. Verse 22, and the glory which you gave me, I have given them, that they may be one just as we are one. Okay, let's take a deep breath, okay. <laughs> if we only understood what Jesus prayed for, and has given to us. If you just understand, I really think that we would be living life very differently. And very differently, I mean that we will be living life like the way Jesus lived. Amen. We've been given that sonship glory. And if I if if I had walked, if say, 
I'm still pers- I'm in that pursuit of that of you know uh, to to function like the way Jesus functioned. And if I had to function in that hundred percent of what Jesus has already given me, uh, I would have what we call it as say heavenly riches. Um, for example, with my earthly riches. How many of us are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, yeah, okay. I can buy, uh, you know, corner house ice creams for all ten of you all, right? With my earthly riches, right? Depending, on you, fine. Death by chocolate, two hundred and fifty rupees. Okay, cool. <laughs> I can buy for you all. That's with my earthly riches. But with the heavenly riches, if I were to function the way Jesus functioned, I can buy one corner house I chocolate ice cream and multiply it to all of you all. Get what I'm saying? That's <laughs> it, it is in it, it is in that level of anointing that Jesus functioned, and and he's saying, and the glory which you gave me, I have given them. And I think time and time again, you and I forget about what we've been given. We forget about our identity. We forget about uh, what. The power that and the authority that's been given to us. Are you are you guys with me? Right. So do, these two are the key truths that you Holy Spirit has been given to you. His power is with you. He wants to function in and through you. And the sonship glory has been given to you as well. And so, then why are we not demonstrating God's power? So we look at a few common questions. Can we do that? Right? Let's look at some of the common questions as to why are we then not demonstrating more of God's power? Why, are, why is the church of this century not functioning like the church of the first century or like the church of the Acts, like we read? Right? Why is my shadow not healing the sick? Okay, so we'll look at some common questions. Okay, so first thing, the first point, why are we not demonstrating more of God's power? Lack of knowledge. Okay, lack of lack lack of knowledge. Okay, so Isaiah chapter thirteen says, um, one verse three. It says, "Therefore, my people have gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. My people have gone into captivity. That means they've been taken into imprisonment uh, because they have." No knowledge in Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. Hosea chapter 4, verse 6 says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And so, a huge say, a huge majority or percentage of Christians or church don't even know what we've been given. Like the two things that we've just spoke about the Holy Spirit and the Sonship Glory, lack of knowledge. And that's a huge reason why uh, we don't demonstrate enough of what of God's power. Okay, so lack of knowledge. And the second point is wrong teaching concerning the supernatural. <laughs> why we don't demonstrate enough of God's power is wrong teaching regarding the supernatural. And some of the points is okay. Here are the arguments some people make: ah, healings and deliverance. It was only for Bible times. No, it is not for us today. Right? Secession. Right? In those days, they did not have medical help as we do today, and hence they needed the supernatural power of God to help them. Okay, these are all true statements. It only happens according to God's sovereign will. So we cannot do much with our faith. <laughs> Sorry. It only happens according to God's sovereign will, so we cannot do much with our faith. Uh, the supernatural will make you spooky. Stay away if you want to be normal. Let's not have supernatural hour anymore. Right? Uh, So wrong, isn't it? Uh, Jesus heals even today, right? He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He hasn't changed, right? He's his heart is still filled with compassion uh, for the sick, uh, for all of us, 
Amen. Right. So wrong teaching concerning the supernatural is another reason, a common uh, reason why the church doesn't move or just demonstrate God's power as it should. Uh, it's just the lie uh, of the devil out there. Okay. Uh, the third third point is leaving the ministry or the miracle or the supernatural ministry for very special people. Re leaving okay, okay. This healing ministry, deliverance ministry is only for Benny Hinn and uh, uh, you know all these pastors in Africa and uh, John G. Lake and you know Smith Wigglesworth and it's all for them. It's not for me, Catherine Kuhlman. It's uh, is that true? By now we should have learned. No, it's for everyone. Every believer can. Uh, can function, can minister in healing and deliverance. Yes, the truth is, okay, so, you know, some of them are called for worship ministry, some of them are called for children ministry, youth ministry, uh, healing ministry, etc., etc., right? Some of them are called for prophetic ministry and whatnot. Yes, there are different offices, as we read in Ephesians chapter 4. Having said all of that, uh, while they can function uh, in their own offices and in the certain gifts, Every believer is called to function. Jesus didn't say only the evangelists and the missionaries and the pastors and the teachers. Okay, pastors, go cast out the, the cleanse the lepers, heal the sick. Uh, are you evangelists? You don't don't interfere with their work. You just just go ahead. You know, do what you have to do. Just preach the gospel. Don't do any signs and wonders. Okay, and uh, the missionaries. Well, you just take people's money and just do whatever you want to do. No, <laughs> he said. He didn't. He did not categorize, right? He did not categorize, right? He did not distinguish. His, he said, "Go, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, etc., etc." And so, um, just know that everybody is called to uh, function in this ministry. Uh, fourth, replacing the supernatural with modern substitutes. Replacing the supernatural with good music, with good lights and sound systems, heavy duty stuff and LED and it's like, oh my gosh, I can't even see the preacher anymore from the stage. You know, it's like, what is happening on the stage, you know, uh, and the technology. That's one of the reasons. And, uh, and other things that's come uh, spoken about a lot in this day and age is apologetics without power. Apologetics. Everybody say apologetics. Right, everybody's doing the course, right? I think you all had the last semester or this semester? Next semester? Oh, next semester. This semester. Okay. Make up your mind, guys. <laughs> right, apologetics, it's a Greek word. It means to defend your faith, to give an argument. Right? Uh, the famous apologists uh, that, that we've uh, heard about. Um, good music is important. Skillful music is important, right? Technology is important. Uh, we've learned that in the last two years, without technology, uh, we could not have. I mean, we, we can't. We can't be reaching out to those online, right? Or have students from different countries. We are thankful for all of that, but we cannot. All of that cannot be substitute for us to function in the supernatural. We cannot be satisfied and say, okay, we have good music, so we do not need. We don't need to have a healing ministry. We don't need to pray for the sick. If you have good sound, good technology, if you have good arguments, uh, intellectual thing of you know uh, how to defend the faith, that's not enough, isn't it? Um, it has to be accompanied with with power. So replacing the supernatural with modern substitutes is not an option. Uh, remember, we are talking about why are we not demonstrating? Why is the church not demonstrating enough of God's power? So we are reasoning of some of the common questions. Uh, the fifth point is. Unwilling to press in till we see more of his power displayed. Unwilling to press in. That means, uh, let's just think about all these wonderful people, uh, you know, uh, the heroes of faith or God's generals, as we call it. Uh, one of the names that come to my mind is John G. Lake. Uh, John G. Lake, is he lived ap approximately 100 years ago. Uh, he was banned from going into a certain cities. You know why? Because hospitals will have no people, patients. He functioned with so much of power and authority uh, that his healing ministry was so impactful. 
uh, and uh, again you know if god has called you and if if you have a heart for healing ministry and what not right uh, there is a book in the library john g lake in the church office uh, you can just I, I would I encourage you to read it uh, about his life and there are so many generals of god who's functioned that the thing is we read about what they did yes or no we read about you know all the miracles we even see some of uh, you know all these beautiful men of god uh, when they pray you know god ministers and in healing what we don't know or what we do not see is the price they have paid we don't know the number of hours they've shut the door and prayed and spent time with god right we don't know the price they have paid and that's a huge point for us is we are unwilling to press in now we have a head knowledge okay every believer can do this we've been given the holy spirit power we know so now we have the knowledge and we're not going to do anything about it we just put it in the locker and keep it chill right um there is a price there is uh, god is inviting us to pursue him amen he is inviting us to pursue him there is a deeper level uh, of of a hunger and a thirst that god is uh, inviting us uh, for us to function uh, the sixth point is uh, other roadblocks to the supernatural is a few couple of simple things is that we don't step out in faith everybody say faith right we don't step out in faith um, faith has a diff another spelling What's the spelling of faith? Wrong. R I S K. Uh, right? We're not willing to take that risk of, uh, okay, what if I get hit or slapped by someone? <laughs> oh, you know, that's, uh, that's one of the reasons. It's not the only reason. And it could be so many other reasons, as in, um, we don't step out in faith because, okay, we are afraid, one. And another is you're afraid of disappointment. Okay, what if I pray and nothing happens? Right? Or a fear of failure. Oh, I have prayed for 10 people. No one has been healed. Why should I do it? Have you heard of Todd White? Todd White? Okay, you can make a note of it. His videos are all over YouTube. Uh, he, uh, Todd White, yeah, he has his... Uh, awesome dude with his long hair and crazy hair. Um, he said, he, in one of his testimonies, he has a healing ministry and he does all this street evangelism. He goes praying for people and people get healed and whatnot. Uh, he says in one, his, one of his testimonies interview, uh, he would have prayed for at least 90 odd people until he saw the first miracle or healing happen. 90 odd people. I mean, imagine if he had stopped at one or two or even 90 you know um because of the past failure so these are all a variety of various reasons uh you know why we can stop moving um just because you don't see instantaneous or spontaneous healing happen that should not stop you and me are you with me yes no maybe a little bit okay Another famous question is, don't demonic powers also have uh, or, or also demonstrate supernatural? Sorry, Anand, I can't hear you. Yeah. Yes. Sure. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Right. Hmm. Yes. No, so the, I mean, if that's the case, let's just take for example uh, the gift of prophecy. Okay, let's just take for example a gift of prophecy, right? Um, 
there there are prophets Ephesians chapter 4 says pastors evangelist teachers prophets yes so that means uh, individuals will be called for the office of a, of the prophet a, a prophetic ministry but uh, we see that in corinthians and say as, as okay pursue a prophetic as well right so we've all given gift of knowledge uh, prophetic words to one another we've seen that happen in the supernatural hour isn't it and so uh, the gift is there uh, Jesus, again, like going back to the point that says Jesus did not distinguish or categorize saying, okay, people are called just to be more focused in that area, like say healing ministry. Like So if you are, in, you are called to do healing ministry, you focus on that. I mean, you preach and you teach all of that. Uh, but that doesn't, that should not stop Vijay. So, so, you know, pursuing that or praying for the sick or healing the sick and whatnot. So he can he can be very in, he can have a very active and a vibrant youth ministry. Are you with me? But at the same time, I don't see any reason as to why he should not pray for the sick or heal the sick, because that's what Jesus has asked all of us as a church. So that is a commission for the entire church, isn't it? And what we know as Great Commission, right, uh, is Matthew twenty-eight, isn't it? So. That's the point that's being made over there. Is that that's a commission for all of the church as well. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we were talking about uh, don't demonic powers also demonstrate the supernatural? What do you guys think, huh? Yes. Of course, no. Hey, so let's just look at uh, Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse nine. Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse. Nine. One moment. Does anybody have any cash on you? Ten rupees, hundred rupees. Have a question? You have? Can I? Can you give it to me? Yeah. Whichever, guys. Yeah, <laughs> in that there is a lot of zeros. <laughs> Thanks, Vijay. Okay, all right. So, okay. So, Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse nine, it says, "The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders." Okay. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders. Now, just as we, as a people of God, can tap into the kingdom of God and his power, people can also tap into the... We spoke about another kingdom, right? Kingdom of darkness, that is in witchcraft and, and warlocks and whatnot. So uh, people can tap into demon, uh, demon power to work deceptive signs and wonders. That's what Thessalonians says, lying wonders, isn't it? And that's what we call it as counterfeit. Yes or no? Right? So, um, so right, that's the reason I asked for this note, guys. Okay, so uh, this is an authentic one, I think. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so this is, uh, okay. Yeah, this is an authentic 50 rupees, right? Um, now, just because there are also counterfeit notes out there in the world, yeah? fake notes right uh, now just because there are fake notes we don't stop using the authentic ones with that with that fear is like oh there's fake ones and whatnot right uh, we still use this isn't it and so yeah sure just because there are you know demonic powers that function in lying wonders as the bible mentions it should not stop us from pursuing what is authentic we know what is authentic, right? Uh, Jesus' teaching is uh, is authentic. And I'm keeping it here safely, Vijay. Right? Um, and there's so many biblical examples we read about in the Bible, Moses and the magicians in the Egypt. You know the story, right? Uh, Moses brings his staff and he throws it, it becomes a snake. And then uh, Pharaoh calls his magicians and he throws two staff that's also become a snake. Maybe Moses was not ready for it. Maybe Moses was taken aback. He's like, oh, God, you did not tell me about this one. Like, but I'm sure God was not surprised or taken aback. It's like, chill, Moses, I got this. You just wait and see what's going to happen, right? So we all know the end of that story, isn't it? And so 
we as god's ministers as his children we should not be uh you know moved or distracted by the demonic powers they are there okay they you know they are counterfeit he is a lying thief uh don't need to care about it okay uh so various example guys in the bible like elijah and the prophets of the baal um and then i mean there are so many points that you uh, which are in the notes as well so um about false prophets and uh, demonic powers um the next point is is asking for signs wrong uh, again, again guys we are talking about some of the common questions uh, that that are regarding or stopping the church from demonstrating the god's power is asking for signs wrong you know you do this only then i will believe something like that right uh, okay quickly make a note of these scriptures matthew 12 38 to 42 Matthew 12:38 to 42 Matthew 16:1 to 4 okay. Matthew 16:1 to 4 Mark chapter 8 was 11 to 13 Mark chapter 8 was 11 to 13 Luke chapter 11 was 16 29 and 32 Luke chapter 11 verse 16 29 to 32 John chapter 2 verse 18 and 22 now uh, in all of these things right it it talks about people who came to Jesus and asked for signs right and one of the common things in all of these scriptures when you read is um the intention of the pharisees and the sadducees was to uh you know capture or make uh they were questioning jesus's uh, authority and power like they wanted to find out okay are you really the christ uh if you are really the christ show us these signs and wonders now jesus could have showed the signs and wonders right now instead of that he understood their intention he's and he tells them that uh the only reason or the only sign you will see is that you will see the son of man uh, resurrect as the ultimate final sign so uh they wanted to come and have you ever had a question a person someone who asks you a question but who is not really seeking an answer you understand what i'm saying have you had anyone who asks you a question but they don't really want your answer they just want to see what you know and uh, disagree with you or cause or make a scene <laughs> you get what i'm saying right um so that's what these people were trying to do okay they didn't really want an answer that jesus was willing to give them and jesus knew their intention and so he said okay the only sign you are going to get is you're going to see the son of man uh, you know resurrect and even that ang angered them <laughs> so uh but Jesus healed everyone who came to him in faith isn't it right and we see that he healed the great uh, all the multitudes of people uh, who came to him uh, for healing okay okay so that's i mean you you don't have your notes so i don't want to give you all a, a lot more than than what we're covering because i think like we've already covered a lot of content um so once you get your notes uh, in your soft copies just go ahead and finish uh, the rest of the points uh, it's fairly simple Okay so what are some of the key points that we covered today regarding healing ministry Okay so healing is not uh in the process but in the person okay those online just uh, some of the key points that we covered today feel free to put it in the chat section Healing is not in the process but it is in the person okay Okay <laughs> loudly guess one at a time <laughs> Okay, Holy Spirit power has been given to all of us. Sorry, Chira. Right, sonship glory has been given to all of us. Every believer can do this. Okay. Sorry, ah, America has powerful effect on people. Okay, every believer is empowered to perform miracles and signs. Thank you, Jackson. 
Miracles, yeah, healing displays the nature of God. It reveals who He is. Okay, what else? Reveals God's greatness, reveals God's compassion. Uh, miracles points to God. They're all signposts. Okay. Anyway, so uh, yeah, I hope it's it, this is this is a good start uh, for this course. Okay, um, and uh, and I'll share your final assignment right away uh, at the very early stage, so you can get on to it. Okay. Oh boy. <laughs> okay. How is this working? It's on airplane mode. Okay. <laughs> okay. So let's pray and we'll close. Yeah. Father, we thank you, uh, Lord, for teaching us uh, through your words, for speaking to us through your word, Lord. I pray, Father, everything that we've learned, Lord, I pray that uh, your word will bear fruit in our lives, Lord. So sorry, guys. Um, let, let your word bear fruit in our lives, I pray, Father. Uh, and everything that we do, I pray that we would walk in sonship glory um, just like you did. I pray that we would walk in the fullness of your Holy Spirit just like Jesus did, Father. We thank you for everything that you're going to do in and through our lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, everybody, online for joining uh, the session. I'll see you all next week. Bye-bye.